continue in our public ministry, the do's and the don'ts and whys and thereofs, we're just going to go right into Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. Setting forth rules, setting forth what to do, how to do it. And we're not going to review, uh, you can go back to the videos and the audios to get previous sessions, but Proverbs 11, verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that wins his soul is wise. Again, that's where the expression soul winning, what that word is done today, I know that's Bible word, but the churches today, I could, I say public ministry, but either or is proper. <clears throat> And we are in the realm what the Bible says that Noah preached, Enoch who was raptured preached, and the Bible says go in all the world and preach the gospel. So setting forth the number 13 on our list, 12 through 1 getting previous, you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to confess and repent and of your present sins in your life now you can't go before God and be used as a vessel if you as a vessel are filthy if you were to go into your drawer where you got your forks spoons and knives and you pick out a utensil and it's dirty you're gonna throw that back into the wash bin it's going back to the cleaning and you're gonna look for a clean vessel and when God is going to use his servants, he's going to use servants that are clean. And the only way he can be clean is 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1, 9. <clears throat> 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, yeah, it's conditional. And if you're going to be in a public ministry soul winning, there should be no if. You must be clean. And the way to be clean, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we've got to set out and be clean as vessels for God. We've got to seek God's filling of the Spirit. Because it's not me going out with the public ministry. It's not you going out in the public ministry. Though we are vessels, we are the outside, inside. And any proper public ministry, you will see that if you are filled with the Holy Spirit and your sins have been confessed, you will see the Holy Spirit work in ways in you that you would find unbelievable. You will find the no scripture that you didn't even know that's in the Bible. Not just throwing scripture out there and it's not there. And that's being filled with the Holy Ghost. That's being filled with the spirit that indwells in us Christians. And we must be prayered up before, during, and after. You've got to learn in our life outside of so many in the public ministry anywhere in our life you got to realize though the world calls it multitasking whatever we do we ought to be in prayer we ought to wake up praying we ought to be if we can't sleep pray we ought to be while we're driving praying while we're talking praying while prayer that is the access we have to God for every Christian, young or old, what, what you do, what you don't do for God. Prayer. You got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Don't go with your own spirit. Go with God's spirit. And then number 14, you've got to go believing. Now, believe that God will do something with the event you're doing. Whether it be knocking on doors, preaching the streets, passing out gospel tracts. It may not seem everybody got saved, and we talk about that. Not everybody's going to get saved. And you're going to go weeks and months and maybe years, and you're not going to see something. And yet you got to go believing that God's going to do it. And if there's one thing you've done, Mark chapter 4. 
if there's one thing you've done, Mark chapter 4. Verse 14, 414, the sower soweth the word. 4.3, behold, there went a, out a sower to sow. If there's one thing that's been accomplished by a public ministry, seeds have been planted. Now, we saw in Corinthians, Paul says, I have planted the Paul's water, but God gives the increase. And we're not to expect a seed to be planted and germinate and grow right away. It doesn't happen. There is no plant that you plant the seed in the morning and at night, it's ready to be picked. And you say, well, I happen to have the opportunity that someone was led to Christ and they're saved. You didn't plant that seed. You watered. Someone else a time, time, time ago planted. And that is God's increase. And we must go praying, we must go filled with the Spirit, we must go believing. And after we are done with that person, we cannot stop praying for them. We got to keep continuing praying for them. Somewhere else down the road, a faithful servant of God will witness to them. A family, somebody. That that seed, if planted, will be watered. And if that seed has been planted and has been watered, that God will produce an increase and not man. You see, how does man produce seed to grow in a public ministry? To say this prayer, but that's not a fruit of God. There is no easy ground for, for planting seeds and one thing to grow. And if you go in negativity, negativity will be your the result. If you're having a bad day, get filled with the Spirit, get joy, get love, get peace back in your heart, the fruit of the Spirit. Because negativity is going to be sensed by those you're dealing with. And negativity is not going to get the positive effect of salvation and how wonderful it is. Get off to the Lord, get right, pray, confess, get filled with the Spirit, get prayer. Be happy. <laughs> Number 15. Be nice. Rudeness will go nowhere. And it'll get you out the door with no seed planted at all. Uh, if you're knocking on doors, you get into somebody's house. There is going to be distractions. You can't, you know, you can't scold the kids. You can't walk over the TV set and click it off. I've seen people do that. And I've seen the person that's in that house that they're turned off. Now, I have not ever been kicked out of a house, but I'm surprised they didn't. And if you're being rude with a person you're dealing with on the street or wherever, you just might as well go in negativity because it ain't going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. You got to be caring, you got to be tender, and you got to be well mannered. You got to be polite. It's got to be please, thank you. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. And this is not a pulpit that there's no hell, fire, fist pounding sermons. Unless you're a street preacher. But I'm talking about with uh, winning souls and about ministry in general. On the street, I preach hell, fire. But if I'm doing one on one with somebody, I'll tell them about hell but i won't you know spit and holler and turn red like a lobster there are public ministries out there where you just got to talk one-on-one -on -one and be respectful and there are public ministries out there you you get the microphone you put it to your mouth and you preach 
so so winning public ministry we got to have discretion on what is the motive and what is the material that we are to use how do we construct our mouth on what we're going to do for the Lord it's not a place to be pointing out sodomites short dresses makeup tattoos smoking drinking that's not the place for a public ministry now if somebody comes to me you know and, and they're talking about drinking okay i'll say something but other than that i'm not going to that's not the place you're not there to preach about alcohol you're there to preach to that man about jesus christ and the saving grace he doesn't know anything else and I've seen people on my Facebook go out preaching. That's exactly what they do. They slam sins. And that's not the place you're turning them off. You got to deal with them with an open Bible. And you got to be patient with them. You got to open the Bible and say, look here. No, right here. Look here. No, here. Now read to me. Read, read what it says. Now we, oh, what's over here? No, we're not talking about it right here. Now, do you understand what Jesus done? No, I don't. And you got prepared to go again. Meanwhile, I mean, uh, if the kids are in the background, they're rooting, hollering, screaming, all that. That's kids. You're dealing in a lost man's house, a lost man's area. You gotta be caring. You gotta be compassionate. You gotta be tender. You gotta talk about the sinner, not their personal sins again. You got to bring them to Calvary. You got to bring them to the Savior that is dying on that cross for sin. Well, you say, Brother Hayward, you know, the guy, he's got a Budweiser in his hand and he's drinking. Okay, so what? Oh, I'm on a sodomite parade and they're all sodomites. So what? Oh, we know. I will nail it down to the two possible sins that everyone has done and you can find in the Bible, Acts chapter 20. Have you ever told a lie or have you stolen anything? I've had people come up to me, oh, what's God think about a, you know, a, a queer? What does God think about a man with a man? I say, well, what's God think about you stealing? What's God think about you lying? Those are two mandatory sins that every human's done. Since the time that that, that child's in the kitchen and mom's asked about that cookie, it's been a stolen cookie and they lied about that cookie. They may never done sodomy. They never may have ever smoked a cigarette. They never. But we can get down to two principles of sins. Lying and stealing. And when we get down to those two basic sins. Have you ever lied? Acts 20, I mean, Exodus 20. Okay, you are a sinner. Isaiah 53 says, because of your sins. Jesus Christ suffered and died and went to that cross because of your sins the wages of those sins is death and it's perfectly logical for tell somebody did you ever lie to your mother or your father now if they say no they're lying then never lie, lie to a girlfriend boyfriend or spouse So you get that person, okay, yeah, I lied to my mother. Were you young? Yeah. Do you realize when you were at that age, whatever that age was, and as stupid as a cookie, when you lied to your mother, that is still on your record today if you have never trusted Christ as your Savior. Can you imagine God casting you off in hell for lying to your mom about a cookie? And then show honor thy mother and father. Did you honor your mother when you told her that lie? Oh, there's two of them. Have you ever taken home a paper clip or a pen that is not yours? Well, uh, yeah, I put it in my pocket. But 
But yeah, isn't that classified really as stealing? Could I not call that place and say, hey, I got the person here that stole your bag? Could they not call the, I mean, it's minor, but could they not call the police and have you arrested? Let me show you something over here. They run over to Genesis chapter 3, and look, they stole something that was not theirs, a piece of fruit, whatever it was. God said not to eat it, and they ate it. They stole it. And what did God do to Adam and Eve for stealing that fruit? You tell them, curse, 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 sweat, sorrows, pain, anguish, get out of my sight. And then their, their children, one murders another murder. One murders the other son. That's what sin does. And let's get back to you lying to your mother and stealing something from somebody. Those are two sins, and then you didn't honor your parents. Those are three sins that God is holding to you right now liable and as a sinner. You will burn in hell. Now let me tell you something. That lying and stealing is not what's going to put you in hell. And now that they're going to, when you tell someone that, they're going to back off. Like, what do you mean? Don't sinners go to hell? Well, yes. But there, then you go, there's only one sin that will put a man in hell. And what's that? Rejecting Jesus Christ as your Savior. If there's one thing that people have in common is hell, they rejected God and his offering. Today would be Jesus Christ. And then, okay, to go further, if they got a cigarette or a beer in their hands, that also doesn't please, not, they, no, uh, no, you know, that doesn't please God either. You realize that, that, that smoke is doing your body bad? You realize that beer was doing to your, your kidneys and your liver? You know, that's not healthy. And God made your body, and he doesn't want you to violate your body. Now, see, you're not hammering, you're not blowing fire down, and now you're teaching something. You're teaching that Jesus Christ suffered and died for sinners, they're a sinner, and sin has consequences. Then go back to Romans 6 23, you're gonna die for doing what you're doing, and then when you die of that sin, well, guess what? If your sins are not washed, first John 1 9. Then you're dead in your sins and trespass without God, without hope, going to hell. Now, with the same issue. If they never acknowledge they are a sinner. Oh, yeah, I lied. Uh, that's nothing. I'll help you. And they're, they're not concerned. They don't care. They don't have no attitude towards God. By this. Don't you go any further. Without the knowledge of sin, there's no Romans road, there's no say this prayer. You see, we can throw them away, we can blast them with their sin they're doing right now, and be an idiot. Or we can work with them, coast them into acknowledging their sin. And if they don't acknowledge their sin, we be just as worse by leading them to Calvary, leading them to say a prayer, and they got a false hope, they got a false salvation, they're going to die because their sins have not been won and end up in hell anyway. As much as you've been rude to this person over here. Don't blast their sins. Acknowledge that they are sinners. Again, you can do that with lying and stealing. And if they will not acknowledge that. Eh, come on, you, you can't get a man. And I've, I've done this. I have done with a person who has never, never told a lie ever to my face, he said. I'm thinking to myself, you're lying right now. But, okay, well, we're done. Here's a gospel track. And there's information on the back. Have a good day. If I think about you, I'll pray for you. I'm not going any further if they, if they don't sin. Now, they may joke and all that. and they, Like I said, the, the beer. And this, uh, 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 uh. Well, bring it serious. They have opened up the door. You don't know, rant and rave against them. Tell you, say, listen, you know, 
if God were to show up and he's not, would he be pleased to see you with a beer or whatever you got? And they keep on joking and, and, and telling and stuff like that. You're not going to go nowhere. Close off the conversation end with prayer and go to someone else. See, we can be caring, tender, well-mannered, being nice, dealing with someone's sins, and we can use that to say, maybe they don't even know what they're doing to sin. Maybe today, they don't know what sin is. And if we're nice, again, we're caring, tender, well-mannered, we can be used by God if we're clean vessels to go on that road. You can't be rude. Again, there's, as far as I know, there's only one public ministry where uh, they call it rude, but you're preaching on the streets. You're preaching to an event where you need to be heard. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of people. There you're not going to be kind, ten, tender, and compassionate. And they're already going to think you're rude because you've got amplification, which they don't realize. They're going into an event that's going to use amplification. I mean, they're going to the ball game. Oh, he hit the ball going up. I mean, that's over loud. That's on the loudspeaker's really loud. What's the difference between it? telling me if a guy's making 400 left hand turns or a guy telling you Jesus can save your soul? They will love the guy turning, telling you that the tennis ball went this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. They will love that and say, love. But they will hate you telling you them about Jesus Christ. And again, even in that, you got to be caring, tender, and well-mannered. That if they're going to blast you, let it be them lying about you. you got to be civilized. Number 16, you got to heed skills. In heeding skills, you got to listen to them and be a good listener. 85% of the time you're going to have witnessing to people, you got to listen to them. You're going to get key points. If you listen to them, you will get to what they know and believe. Whether it's right or wrong. Somebody will might start, oh, you know, I'm a Christian. And I go to this church and, oh, okay, really? And I do this, you know, and I do that, you know, and look how well I am. And, not, you know, just by the guys talking and let him talk, you know where he stands. And if he comes out and says, listen, I, I received Christ at the age of something and I'm saved and I know where I'm going and I know I'm not doing as right as I should. Well, you've got somebody who's saved and you... You don't deal with them salvation, you deal with them, let's grow. Whereas that guy, he had church, he had works, he had this, he had this. And that. You got, listen, you're not a Christian. We're going to deal with your, you as a lost sinner. And if you listen, they will respect you and see your tender care, as before, number 15, and give you the, their time some more. And you may not walk out of their door, you may not walk out of their presence, you know, them getting saved and angels glory in heaven. But they, hey, listen, that guy listened to me. I didn't agree with what he said. And if there comes time and trouble in their life, if you give them, and it's a sincere, honest conversation, and you give them your information, next time when life really gets serious, they might, hey, listen, you know, that guy listened to me. And you may be called back into their presence where you can listen again and you can put some more seed, some fertilizer, some more watering. We've got to listen. God gave two ears. I'm out there to go you know, witness for Christ, witness for Christ. And sometimes you got to hear them out to figure out where they stand in Christ. If there's any standing, if there's any state they belong in. And maybe God sent that person along for you just to listen to their I, We have a, a thing at, at the flea market many times just listening to them. Sometimes they'll come up to you, they're saved, and man, they got a glorious, wonderful testimony, and it just reminds you, yes, there are others out there who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. There are others out there who are listening. There are other people out there doing 
and it might build you up more and God may have sent that person listen he's down he's out he needs an encouragement talk now you just sit there and listen and if they listen then they may listen back to you now not always not always but most cases they will listen to you when now there's some people who are talkers and they're just talkers and talkers and talkers and if it's just a vain talking and never turns out to be anything and you can't get and you, you gotta excuse yourself again we we've got to in the public ministry so we've got to discern that moment because no moment is like any other moment there's got to be times that do we walk away from this or do we keep going number 17 the talker the talker i'm talking about you the christian one does the talking only one you you're dealing with somebody you got three people talking it, it turns out to be a clutter a mess it goes you talk about bunny trails and all kinds of things and you lose grass one is a talker and do not butt in on the talker do not overtake the talker I mean you know more and you got all more information shut up it wasn't you to be the talker help the talker if his train of thought gets lost but hell do not conquer the talker he's like oh man that guy in the way what's that guy elijah yeah thank you very much. elijah oh there's a place in the bible oh oh you mean romans 6 yeah romans 6 thank you romans 6 23. now don't you go in there romans 6 23 you'll you see your romans 6 that wasn't your time There is no victory when two Christians argue at home of a lost man or a saved man. Here you are, you're, you're going out in the public, you're dealing with people you don't know, and you two are having an argument, a battle. Well, what's that look to the other person? What's that look like to your church? What's that look like to what you guys, what's that make it look like to Jesus when you two are arguing? And listen, Jesus had, with his disciples, were arguing all the time. One time they're arguing who's going to be the greatest and Jesus put them down by taking a little child and saying, you know, unless you be like this little child, that's not the place. And when the disciples were doing that, they were not fully grown. And when you see them to the book of Acts, they're not arguing together. And when they're arguing, they're in the, the assembly together. So there's no arguing with each other. Now, if you, you start begin arguing with the person you're dealing with, you guys start closing. When you're dealing with another person, you talk, they talk. You talk, they talk. Simple. Never interrupt the person, never. And sometimes I do that. Sometimes when I'm dealing with somebody, they say something completely out of the wall and my mouth opens up and it shouldn't. But I'm thinking in my head, you know, you, you ought not to be thinking about what you're just saying right now, but I'm wrong. It's being polite. Before you walk the path of that front door or go to street preach, visit a nursing home, whatever you're going to do, before you even set out, begin, you're in the car or you're, you're at the car setting up and whatever you're doing, know who will do the talking Hey, listen, the first house, Jim, you got it. I got the next house. And then you, then me, you know, how many houses we get? Well, when we, we set up here for preaching, why don't you preach first? 
if you've got something, and then I'll preach. And then don't have them open up the door and you look at each other. Well, uh, I thought you were going to do it. Now, that happened to me the very first time I went door knocking. And the man that was him, he stepped in only because when he opened up the door, may, may I help you? I, 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 uh, I forgot my name. I forgot what church I was at. I forgot why I was there. And, and the man said, this is Stiley Hayward. And we're here for about the Lord Jesus Christ. I apologize. This is his first time. And I think he said something to me, you know, be, be nice unto him. So know who's going to do what who's going to do what you're up there and, you, and the guy's open up the door and he's going to listen to you you have nothing to say because you're looking at each other uh and if you have an unexperienced person doing the witnessing as i just gave you the testimony when i went for politely when the situation goes awkward for them proclaim it's their first or second time and say you know i'm here training i'm help i'm here helping him and do it politely do it respectfully and hopefully the person you're dealing with will be respected and the person you are working with will be respected back them up but do not take over again unless the situation is totally out of control the person who, who is who is trying to learn who's new or at this thing and he just does not know where to go and that for him the situation has ended again apologize be brief try to get him back on in front of the person try to you know encourage him try to get and if not then take over the conversation with apologies to both the parties and the person you're dealing with and the person you're with will both respect you. And they won't see you as an interrupt, interruption, but see you as a helper. And then with the statements and questions, be brief and to the point. We're not there for argument. We're not there for, you know, let's go 400 Bible verses. All right, when you get your Bible to Isaiah 3, and we're not there for a Bible study. And they got questions, be brief. Well, do all people go to heaven according to the Bible? No, they don't. But as far as you, and you got to keep that subject on them and off the population. I mean, population of the world. Because they're going to wonder about everybody and anybody and cows and, and whales and, and manatees and dogs and cats. And we just getting it off themselves. We've got to bring all question statements back to that one individual person. Remember, we're dealing with one individual. Unless, again, it's that public ministry of street preaching. But one on one. That guy is going to try to alibi you by everybody. What about the heathen in Africa and all that? No, let's talk about you, sir. So get right back to, you know, answer the questions as quick as possible. And we'll get to the other questions at, at number 18, but we're going to end now. Keep it focused on be kind, be polite, don't be rude. Be someone that may invite you back. Maybe they, you know, think about what you were talking to them and time goes by and they just say, you know what? Uh, this is such and such church. Yeah, those two guys that came out to my house, can you ask them to come back out sometime? I've got some more questions. Or I, I, I want to listen to them. They're respectful. They were kind. They were... And there, see, you, you planted a seed, rightly. 